Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at one of our new assets. We just added an apple to the asset library. It's looking nice and realistic, I suppose. Nice touch to any kind of food related scene or whatever. And today I want to show how to set up, for example, a rigid body simulation for a bowl of apples or apples on a table or on a street falling out of, you know, a moving car or truck. And so let's just start the rigid body introduction so let's say we've got this apple and we want to just duplicate this for a nice rigid body pile of apples so what we can do is first add like an object that's going to be the container of the fallen apple so let's say we add a very simple fruit bowl i'm just going to add shift a a circle <clears throat> excuse me and and I'm just going to, in edit mode, extrude this outwards, like that. Then I'm going to double click on this inner edge, or alt click, maybe the shortcut for you, depending on what selects the loop. And I can just fill this up with F. And we can just go out of edit mode, shade it smooth, and just scale it up first. Or shade auto smooth, perhaps. There we go. And then we have to add that in uh, the geometry data. Hold on. And then we can just scale it a bit bigger. Well, this is going to be our bowl of apples. A nice big bowl. Maybe we need to make this a bit higher though in edit mode. Just move this up a little bit. There we go. And let's an add a nice bevel to this edge. So just control B. Scroll up a few times. We'll make a nice bevel. There we go. And then let's press A, E, Escape and Alt S to just X um, in extrude this in <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say there we go and give it a little bit of thickness something like that and now uh, let's select our apple and we don't really need to work with this original apple so let's just hide this for now um and let's just press shift a and add the shape that we want our pile to be in and i want to use a cube for this um or let's delete this and shift a add a cylinder and let's just move that up S, Shift, Z, scale that nice and big, move it up a bit there and select the top, G, Z and scale that down a bit, right? It's going to be more shaped like a pyramid, I suppose, and we can scale this up even more and move it a bit above our surface, of course, because this is going to be um, containing our apples and they will be falling down into that bowl in like an organic motion. <clears throat> so let's go and open up a new tab. And there's multiple ways to get a nice um, a nice grid, I'd say, of apples. You can do it with an array modifier, but I like to do it with GeoNodes um, just to have more control. Open up a GeoNode, click New, and it's going to be incredibly easy. Shift A and find a mesh to volume. And then have points in volume. There we go. And we can set this to grid. And then we can increase the size of this grid, right? So we can just drag over the values and just increase the value. So we've got more spacing between those points. We can decrease the threshold a bit as well. So they can also spawn on those edges. And there we go, pretty much, right? So uh, let's say these are the points. We can then find an instance on points and we can drag the instance out to an object info. And this is going to be relative set to our apple right so then we are spawning apples now we just need to find the correct spacing between these apples and um, to do that i'm going to select my cylinder ctrl a and apply the transforms and then we can space everything out a little bit easier right otherwise it's going to be unevenly spaced in the different dimensions something like this works fine and let's also set the origin to the geometry and um, there we go. Perhaps we can also set the origin to the origin of the apple. That is going to make sure that they spawn at the correct location. Curse to select it with the apple selected. And hide it. Select your cylinder, right mouse, origin to 3D cursor. Right, so then it's going to match perfectly. So you can see that this is about the spacing we need. So let's just crank up that scale in the Z direction a little bit too. Like that. Maybe even more, you know, they will be falling nicely on top of each other. Something like this. And let's scale up the ball S, Shift, Z a bit as well. And Control A, Apply Transforms. 
So I think something like this will already work fine for now, right? So we got a nice bunch of apples and we can just let these drop into our bowl. But before we do that, there's one thing we need to double check. So if we select our apple, our original apple here, and let's go into edit mode, we, make, we need to make sure that this is one object. Otherwise, we can't separate our mesh later, which is a bit annoying. Um, so to check if it is one mesh, you can press A or you can just unselect everything by clicking out of it and press L over one of the objects. So this one is actually not connected. So I'm going to do just a little bit of a cheat method because I don't really care about the geometry no, uh, the geometry um, at this point, at least for now, you know. I just want to create a pile of apples. And if you want to remain this geometry, if you want to keep it, we can just press, press Shift D and move this um to the same location by pressing escape and rename this to apple backup right there we go just hide that and we can now just connect a vertex of the stem to a vertex of the apple right it's just that easy now it will see it as one mesh so now we can hide the original apple and we can select our geonode setup shift a at our realize instances and we can now just apply this, right? Object, convert to mesh. You can press tab, A and B and separate by loose parts. Beautiful. Now we've got a bunch of apples that are separated. Now, if you want to actually apply the original mesh to these apples, right? So let's say we don't want that connection anymore. Um, that extra edge that we added, but we just want that original mesh. We can do that. And to do so, we first need to add the origins of these apples to their current locations. So right mouse, origin to geometry. And then we can unhide our backup apple, the original mesh. Hold shift, select that apple. And then we can press control L and link object data. So now if we select one of these apples, we can see in edit mode, we got two separate parts again, right? So we can then just work with the original mesh, which is beautiful. So let's hide our original apple, select all of these apple objects. I usually use a box select for that and you can change that right here and cycle between them by pressing W. Um, and I want to apply a rigid body simulation to these apples. So let's go into the physics tab and let's find a rigid body there. And this is going to be an active object because it's going to be moving. And our plate is going to be a passive object because it's going to be still. And now the one setting we need to look at is the um, shape, the collision shape. And we can set this to be a bunch of different things, right? We can set this to be a convex hull, the default one quite, works quite well too. Uh, but you can also choose more, um, a more easy shapes, let's say a sphere. And if you choose a sphere, it's going to look at your object as it's going to be colliding as a spherical shape, which usually makes your animation run a bit quicker, your rigid body simulation. Now, in this case, a bit tricky because we've got a little bit of a stem sticking out, which is going to mean that our origins of our objects are probably not going to be completely centered. Um, if they are, and you do want to try it, you can set this to be a sphere, and you can see what the actual shape of that sphere is going to look like. And it's actually not bad at all. I think we could even use a sphere for this one, but we'll go through some of these settings to see what it's going to look like, okay? So to copy a rigid body simulation, to your other selected objects, we can go to objects, rigid body, and we can just copy from active. And now all of these will have the same rigid body system. Now for the plate, however, we need to set this up manually, rigid body, passive, and now it should already work. Now they are going to be a bit chaotic because they already are intersecting a bit from the start, right? But what we can do is add a little bit of a guide um, to our simulation by adding shift a let's add a cylinder scale that up there we go and we can just delete the top and bottom face we don't really want that um delete only faces and then we can just extrude this e escape alt s scale it out a little bit right and then this is going to be our kind of guide right and then also add a rigid body set to passive 
Um, and then if we just play this, and actually let's set the shape to be a mesh for this one. And for the plate, let's set this to be um, rigid body. We didn't add one yet, I suppose. And set this to passive. And set this to mesh. And let's make sure we also have this set up passive. There we go. So now if we play this, you can see they will um, expand, explode a little bit at first. But it will be contained nicely within our um, our guide. So let's just call this sim guide. And let's go to the object settings, viewport display. And let's set this to be um, display as wire. There we go. That's quite interesting already. And we can also just locate it in uh, the outliner by pressing the dot symbol on your numpad. And if you don't have a numpad, you may just have to look for it. Um, and then you can just hide this, you know, in viewport and render. We don't need this other than just to simulate, I suppose. Um, and you can see that now we have a nice simulation of apples falling onto a plate. Beautiful. So this is what the sphere does the sphere shape as our simulation and let's also test this with um, the convex hull, hull and the mesh right so select everything and um, hold shift and select one of the apples doesn't matter which one and let's set this to be convex hull which means it's going to be more of a shape around your original mesh like this so it's going to include that little antenna that little stem at the top um, and then object rigid body and uh, apply no copy from active there we go now if we play this it's going to be a bit slower because it's got more geometry in that collision object but if we play this you can see it's working quite nicely if we play this for a while you can see it's it's just gonna be a bit closer back together because it's actually going to take a look at the shape of these apples right in more of a detailed way so let's just let this play. Everything is looking smooth. We're creating a nice pile. Um, and whenever we're satisfied with the results, right? So we can just pause it and render that frame or even convert it to a mesh. So it stays like that forever. Okay. So let's pause it right there. You can see it even interacts with a little stem there, um, which is quite detailed already, I suppose. So... Let's pause this on a nice frame, perhaps this. Then in this case, I just want to turn my apples into a geometry. I want this to be um, the same for the entire scene that I'm working with. So I'm just going to select all of my apples here. And then we can go to object, we can go to rigid body, and we can actually go to apply transformation. And then we can go to object, um, rigid body and remove. Right, and now our apples are the same um, transformations, the same positions throughout the entire scene. It's just storing that transformation into the current um, shapes. So that's pretty much how that works, right? And perhaps in the next one, we can take a look at baking the actual simulations or transforming them to keyframes or whatever. And But for this one, I think this already works quite well, right? So now we can add a nice material to this. We can set it up in a nice scene um, and work with that. So if you liked uh, this tutorial, if you now have a bit more of a understanding of rigid bodies and a nice way to set them up, Please leave a like, a comment or subscribe. We will enjoy any one of those. And then we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.